We are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we just finished a conversation with Councilman Steve Glover. He's got some strong opinions, and I know a lot of you agree with him. Uh, joining us now, and you heard him mention, uh, you know, the Vice Mayor Jim Shulman. Uh, Jim is in studio with us this morning, but social distancing. Good morning to you, Jim. Good morning, Nick. Thank it's you good for to having see me. You. Yeah, listen, um, you weren't able to hear everything when you came in that Steve was talking about, but he made reference to the, the, the council meeting where an awful lot of people were calling in, and it was not long after the emotion of the protests and like, and they kind of, as Steve said, hijacked the meeting where where, you know, no one could get through to talk about the property tax and the budget because a lot of people wanted to talk about defunding the police and that issue. And uh, I know you, I think, got a little frustrated with it, didn't you? <laughs> um, yeah, frustrated is probably the uh, correct word. Or, um, uh, you know, everybody, um, uh, I've been on the show and I've talked to Nick a lot of times and I'm, I'm pretty calm, usually. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there's been so much stress lately with um, tornadoes and the pandemic and the courthouse that... Um, but I, you know, I, I lost my temper and I, I apologized. Um, we all we all have that moment where we just kind of lose it, and that was my moment. Um, you know, I, I will say that a um, couple things. One is, I I really do want to listen to people when they talk, particularly when we're talking about a dollar increase on the budget, um, and that's what. Um, Part of the reason why I got so frustrated was that we had people trying to call in that night. Um, one lady I talked to who attends almost every council meeting who has serious concerns about what we're doing with this proposed property tax increase called me the other day and said she tried to call in 277 times wow. before she got in. Um, I, I really, I'm happy to stay there all night, that, and we did. We stayed there until 5.30 in the morning. Uh, listening to people and we got everybody in who was who showed up whatever time they showed up in the courthouse and some people showed up really late uh, and people who called but I mean I consider my responsibility to all Nashvillians you all elected me as the vice mayor my job is to listen to everybody and what I think got frustrating for me was that we were having trouble listening to everybody uh, on, on something this important on the budget and this much of a property tax increase, we do want to hear from people because there are people who are very concerned about what it will do for the city. And um, and I know a lot of people have been out of work for a while, and they're also concerned about having to pay for this. And so you have to listen, and and um, that's where it got frustrating. And and. Um, Again, I've been told not to. Uh, I've apologized. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. not supposed to keep doing that, but. Um, <laughs> It was, um, I, I, I think I've been mad, that mad, maybe six times in my life. Yeah. Um, I wish I hadn't gone outside to try to figure out what I could do. I was trying to solve the problem, and I just, you know. All right. I, it just, that's what happened. Fair I enough. will tell you, yep. um, Nick, one other thing, just for your viewers, just uh, so you'll know, this is a little secret that most people don't know. Uh, Steve Glover and I have known each other for 20 plus years. Um, he is a very good friend of mine. We disagree on all kinds of different things. We agree on other things. But um, Steve Glover is my friend. I talk to him all the time. He may not want to admit that on television, and he's off now. But um, that's what, to me, that's what all this is, all what politics is supposed to be about is um, working with people who you don't necessarily agree with or you, you know, have differences of opinion, but being able to talk through it and, um, uh, you know. Yeah. I really appreciate Steve Glover. All right, so let's talk about kind of what Steve Glover said. And uh, Patty here is uh, voicing the opinion, I think, of many on Facebook who are following us as well, mm -hmm. saying that, you know, it's common sense that in a pandemic and people facing hard times not to go 32% on an increase or more. And we've talked about this before. Now, Steve was hoping to maybe take a look at the option of a, a wheel tax and maybe a 10% property. He, even he acknowledges there's going to have to be some type of property yeah. tax increase, but 32% for him is way too much. He says now through finance to make it work with a wheel tax and the money that they say is needed, it's going to be like 21% plus that, which is more than Steve wants. Your take as you see this moving forward now, um, you know, and people were wondering and asking, why do other council members disagree with Steve? And where is the, the separation here? And where do you come down on this? Because he clearly has some real issues with raising the taxes that much and fears what will happen to the city if, if this happens. Yeah, I, I think um, uh, so. People have to look at this very, very, you know, looking at it different ways. So, um, I, I guess the, the most simple way of explaining this is um, 
um, you know, there, there's a forecast of what we expect to lose in the next fiscal year. Our budget has to balance. So if you take what revenues we think we're going to get and what the expenses are going to be, and then the need to replace the, the, the funds, like the rainy day funds, mm -hmm. for, uh, then you need a certain amount of money, and it's a $330 million hole that you're looking at. So you take those basics. This is not a, as complicated as a budget may be. It's, uh, it's a pretty simple problem. Because of COVID-19, the economy shut down, and we ran into this hole. So the question is, how do you, you have to, you have to balance it. Um, I think the mayor said the cavalry wasn't coming. Maybe they will. Maybe the federal government will do something, and then we can replace that, and then that rate can be adjusted. But at this point, we have to pass a budget by the end of June, and so you have to figure out how to fill that hole. So that's what you're seeing are people trying to figure out how do you fill that hole. And, um, you know, um, what the mayor proposed was basically uh, there's a few things I have to do, but I just got to fill that hole. What Steve is trying to do is fill it a different way because he's concerned that that property tax rate is too high. So he's trying to figure out another way to do it. What you're looking at and what you'll see next Tuesday um, are different people trying to figure out how to fill that hole because that's what we've got to do. Do you think the vote will come next Tuesday or you think <laughs> you'll put it off another week? Well, so it's scheduled next Tuesday night. Um, I hear um, I, yesterday was the last day for council members to submit proposed amendments to budgets. I hear there's a lot of them, okay? Mm -hmm. Even though there's not a lot of money to play with, you know, people do submit um, amendments. It, so our staff is busy working on those amendments right now. They had to be requested by yesterday and they'll start, they're being written right now. Um, I will say this, I mean, so we typically, you know, hit that third Tuesday in June and we're ready to go. but. Obviously, there's a lot of unrest. We're getting lots of emails from people. We had, you know, that marathon meeting, you know, a week and a half ago. There's a lot of people listening. I'm listening. We're trying to figure out what to do. So we'll see what happens. I, the one thing I would always say is if we're not ready to go next Tuesday, um, we have uh, two more weeks before the end of the mm -hmm. month where we can adjourn to and, and make sure we try to get this right. Very difficult time, Nick. You know, lots of people upset. Um, and here we have a budget that also has people upset, and we're trying to figure out how to do it. But um, it's set to go next Tuesday. You should okay. keep an eye on us, right. and then we'll see what happens after that. Let's uh, take some phone calls. We've got one from uh, Kate. Kate, good morning. Do you have a question or comment for the vice mayor? Yes, I do. I have a question. Okay. The vice mayor um, <laughs> is addressing the sort of fiscal challenges and the need to make up for this rainy day fund to support our budget, which is makes a lot of sense. The National People Budget, uh, National People's Budget Coalition just released a survey to over 5,000 residents here in Nashville. And the results of that survey suggest that those 5,000 folks suggest over a $1 million, I'm sorry, $100 million should be divested from MMPD. What would, how can, uh, Vice mayor, the vice mayor make sure that the people's voices are heard and that this deficit or this money that we're looking to, to put back into our community comes out of the right places. Okay. All right, thank you for your call. So thanks, Kate. Uh, so yeah, um, uh, the folks who are supporting the people's budget are, I think, doing a, a good job of certainly getting the messages to us. They're sending it in. So Kate, I'll, I will tell you that um, um, uh, either fortunately or unfortunately, the vice mayor doesn't vote. So my job is to run the meeting. The only way I would ever vote is in case of a tie. So if you, if you watch the council meetings, uh, you notice that I never vote. Uh, that's just the way it is. That's in the charter. So I, I don't vote. Um, I would say that, uh, you know, what um, the folks who are, um, the people that p are pushing this are sending emails in. And you certainly got everybody's attention. It's, uh, I think it's $107 million that you're asking for from the police department to, to put into schools and other things, uh, homeless council, um, different programs. Um, I think it was the last I saw it was about $38 million from the DA's office that was being requested to divest and about maybe 3 or $4 million from the sheriff's office. 
So um, um, you're being hurt. I mean, you know, you're getting the message across. We're, we're looking at it. That's essentially defunding yeah. the police department. Well, so um, right. I, mean, I is it more checked, or less? I had checked this morning to find out exactly what the overall budget is for the police department, and I think it's about two hundred and maybe two hundred twenty million. I may be off a little bit, uh, but it's around two hundred twenty million because you're talking about a lot of personnel and and a lot of supplies. Now, always remember this is the operations budget. Um, there was a lot of discussion at that meeting a week or a week and a half ago about the helicopters. Mm -hmm. um, that's not in this budget. That's that was passed a couple of months ago. Um, so it's this is the operations <coughs> budget we're talking about. Um, so it's about 220, Nick, 220 million. So if you take about 107 million away from the police department, um, you're basically taking about half of it away. So scaling it back is, and that's something yeah. that you know we've talked about and coming up. Uh, a lot of folks advocating for putting it elsewhere and coming up with a new form of social justice. Keep in mind, by the way, when we talk about defunding police departments, a lot of people say, "Well, what does that mean? I mean, who will investigate bank robberies and murders?" That doesn't mean that goes away. There's just a different system that's being discussed, and how exactly that will work. Who knows how that will go as a lot of people watching Minneapolis. Yeah. But that is not by any means something where it's like, well, it's going to be a lawless society with vigilante justice. At least that's the argument. Some fear that's what could happen. <laughs> so, yeah, you're, you're you know. not sure. So I know uh, Minneapolis is, is looking at this sure. thing and they're talking about you know, how to recreate it. I think um, when I first heard the fund, I thought the, the, what, the latter of what you said, and that mm -hmm. is, well, okay, so you're going to take all the money away from the police department who's going to provide the security, who mm -hmm. protects our kids at schools, all, all those different things. I, I think as you look more about it uh, or more into it, there's a message. And, um, you know, again, um, I mean, despite what some people thought, I, I'm, I've heard the message. I listened. I was there the whole time. I, I, there's a message being sent. So, you know, I, I don't vote on this budget. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what will happen in this budget. I'm, you know, obviously you just heard from Council Member Glover. Who knows? I mean, you know, we'll see what happens, what the council wants to do. If the council can't decide, the mayor's budget becomes law as that's, effective June 30th. That's a, a good point to make. Uh, yeah. There has to be a budget by the end of the month, and if right. not, what the mayor's proposed. So if there's going to be modifications, that's up to the council. Listen, we'll take a break. Okay. When we come back, more phone calls uh, in our final segment with the vice mayor right after this.